Okay, everybody. Without further ado, we'll begin our webinar. If there are any additional attendees logging in a little late, don't worry. We will have a section available for questions, and the recording will also be available online shortly after the presentation. So once again, thank you today for attending Channel Vision's IP Camera 201, Creating a Central Management System. My name's Troy Barron, National Sales Manager here for Channel Vision. Just a little bit about me. I've been in the industry for 10 years or so uh, in a variety of different positions. So I will be able to assist you with any needs that you may have, as well as any additional questions Channel Vision related. Now, we've already done a test so that hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, so today we're going to begin and we're going to learn a few different products today. We're going to specifically discuss some product specifications for Channel Vision's IP cameras as well as the basic initial IP setup to get things started as well as some additional considerations and variables for you to consider when designing your IP based system as well as learn and go through the setup process of the central management software interface. We will also learn what a central management system is, the types of applications and when it should be used, as well as remote recording, backup, and other key functions that you can utilize within this software. In addition, this should take approximately uh, 45 minutes, maybe a little less. We do appreciate uh, and understand that your time is valuable, and hopefully we'll be able to offer you an additional tools to help you make some more money and spec out some more jobs uh, more accurately. Today you guys will all be under mute. You can type any questions that you have in the question section of your screen and we will address those questions during the question portion of the training. Uh, by having you ability to type in your questions ensures that we get to all your questions. If we do not get your questions answered, Please uh, remain calm, and we will do our best to get those answers to you after the webinar, as well as there will be a brief survey after the training. Please uh, complete that. We do value your feedback and is how we develop new trainings and new products as well. Without further ado, let's begin with the product introduction. Today we will be discussing... Channel Vision's line of IP cameras, including the 6521 dome camera, the 6522 bullet camera, as well as the 6524 flush mount IP camera, which will be available in late December. Regarding some of the specifications of the IP cameras for the dome and bullet, each camera boasts a high definition resolution of 1600 by 1200, which means you're going to get a very solid picture quality. Uh, each of the cameras have a verifocal or adjustable lens from 3.6 to 16 millimeters for your bullet camera and an adjustable lens of 2.7 to 9 millimeter verifocal lens for your dome camera. Both cameras are water resistant at IP66 ratings and offer multiple compression formats, including H.264, MPEG-4, and MJPEG streaming. Both cameras have the ability to view in the night using IR illuminated LEDs for up to 60 feet away. In addition, both IP cameras can be viewed directly on your smartphone via the iPro Secure app. As well, both of Channel Vision's IP cameras are also OnViv compliant. OnViv is an industry standard implying that all the products will work nice together. And Channel Vision will work with any OnViv compliant NVR. The IP cameras also boast a two-way audio feature, so that you could connect a microphone and an audio output for communication. 
as well as power over Ethernet capabilities, as well as the ability to use an analog video output. If perhaps your system is starting small and intended to grow, this can be managed through the analog video connection. If you're using your iPhone or an iPad, you can use the iPro Secure mobile app to view the cameras. If you need onboard storage, the dome camera does offer an SD card slot as well as a vandal proof design. Setting up your cameras is fairly easy. Once you mount and install your cameras, you could adjust the focus and the zoom according to your specific application. The cable pinout offers a robust variety of connections to ensure that you'll be able to suit any application. This includes a 12 volt DC uh, option if you're not using the power over Ethernet enabled option. <coughs> Excuse me. As well as alarm triggers for relays, your analog video output, a microphone input, as well as a microphone output for audio, and an Ethernet port for communication and power over Ethernet capabilities. Speaking of power over Ethernet, the concept of power over Ethernet, or PoE as it's known, is a technology that allows LAN-enabled devices such as network cameras to provide power over an IP network's infrastructure using standard Ethernet cabling. In the case of our IP-based surveillance systems featuring PoE, each camera transmits data and receives power via the Ethernet cable, eliminating the need for complicated or extensive cabling because the system operates along the existing network. Power over Ethernet allows for flexible camera installations, as it can be placed in areas where power outlets are not readily available. This means that the users can actually install the cameras where they need them, just not where the AC sockets are located. Power is supplied directly from the port uh, of your network device and is delivered to the camera directly. Another benefit of power over Ethernet enables you to reset your router and camera power remotely, as well as use a UPS battery backup to ensure your cameras are always recording, even in the loss of power. So how does all that work? Um, well, first detail is that you do need to have a PoE-enabled switch operating on an 802.3AF standard. And this uh, is currently not available from Channel Vision today, but is an industry standard nonetheless. An example of how this would be connected to your power over Ethernet enabled switch shown here. Simply connect your cameras via your network to your power over Ethernet enabled switch. Just to further extend upon this, the network camera or even an analog DVR will integrate to the network via Cat5 connection or Ethernet cable. Once plugged in and integrated to the network, can be viewed on your iPad, smartphone, or computer using your central management software. Speaking of central management software, which is what we'll mainly be discussing today, uh, the software is included and offers multi-channel monitoring for up to 36 cameras without any additional licensing. The central management software is essentially one way that you can record your IP cameras. Worried about what phone you have and if it's supported? Well, if you have a Windows Mobile, Symbian, Blackberry, Apple, or Android phone, you can view the IP cameras directly on your smartphone. You may be asking the question, well, there's a lot of people that make IP cameras, so how do you compare against some of the other manufacturers of IP cameras? Well, that's true. There are many manufacturers of IP cameras um, and they offer a variety of different sizes and prices. This just offers a comparison against a few of the popular models that you may find out there. And you may note that Channel Vision does offer the high resolution 2 megapixel cameras. Yes, there are manufacturers that make higher resolution cameras. This does have the ability to see in day and night, which is unique with some of our IP cameras. 
with a high resolution, with a verifocal lens capability, as well as the ability to have audio and SD recording. Not to mention, on a very aggressive price for the Channel Vision IP cameras. Either choice, dome or bullet, will carry a suggested dealer price of $375. A great value for the features that it includes. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> In addition to our IP cameras, we also offer IP-based video servers which will essentially make any analog camera IP, offering the same compression rate, high quality resolution, as well as local SD card storage, and RS-232 control. This will enable you to add one camera to your network that's analog and be able to integrate it with the same central management software. Now, if your question is, Troy, what if I have more analog cameras, then I say, we also have a four channel which will be available in mid-December offering the same features as well as being able to integrate with um, the existing central management software platform you can use these as a great retrofit solution to connect any camera and make it an IP camera simply connect your analog video camera to the web server offering a loop out feature so you can still feed it back to your DVR if you desire and then connect via Cat5 to your, to your network and be able to integrate your analog camera just as if it were an IP camera. Another unique feature about Channel Vision's IP product line is that we also integrate with automation companies, the leading automation companies, including Control 4, Savant touchscreens, as well as Crestron units. And more partners are added shortly. Uh, regarding the extra vegetable drivers, you can try these out for free at extravegetables.com. Password five day. So now you may be asking, well, what is this driver going to do for me? Well, the driver from Extra Vegetables regarding your Control 4 system allows the images to be displayed on Control 4's touchscreen interface. And that's all it does. That's what it's designed to do. Uh, it will not give you permission to record your software or make adjustments within the camera. Its purpose is for streaming. Control 4's camera interface is strict in regards to what um, can be added, and Extra Vegetables has implemented all the current features available. Now, it has come to our attention that um, when using the Channel Vision IP cameras with a Control 4 system on an iPad or directly via the Internet, it may not always perform as it should. I will make note that the Channel Vision cameras with the extra vegetable drivers work flawlessly directly on Control 4 touchscreens and can be viewed on your iPad via the direct iPro Secure app we discussed earlier. However, Control 4 is fixing the communication error between the two when using a Control 4 app on an iPad overlay. This is anticipated to be resolved in version 2.2 release of Foresight. Just as a reminder, if you have any additional questions, feel free to type them in the box below and we will be addressing them shortly. Right after we discuss the basics of assigning your IP address. This is an important feature because this is how you get the cameras on the network to be able to be viewed. <coughs> to assign an IP address, first start your computer, select the run icon from your computer, and type in the command prompt. You can type in ipconfig slash all into the DOS prompt that appears. This will provide you with your IP address. Please make note of this. 
Um, and it's important that we're not going to use the same IP address for our IP camera, for our IP cameras. Below is our IP address for our computer. The IP address for the cameras does have to be different than the computer. It is the identity of the camera. In addition to documenting your IP address from this screen, you will also want to extract your default gateway, your DNS server, and your subnet mask. This information will be required and will be have to load it in a different um, part to assign your IP address for your camera. Once you've copied this information from your uh, command prompt, you can give the IP camera a unique IP address by changing the last three numbers of that IP address. You can change those IPs and make notes in your IP configurator where you'll be able to identify each camera specifically. If your interest is to be able to view this outside of your network, you will have to assign a port to your camera. Recommend using ports between 5400 and 9000 and being specific regarding uh, what IP port your camera is assigned to. Now there are many different ways <coughs> excuse me, to be able to view outside of the network you will have to port forward your router. Uh, this is an illustration of what it may look like in the administrative section of the router itself. Simply plug in the IP address for the camera that you assigned, designate the port that you issued your camera, and select from your drop-down box. This is an example using Channel Vision C0514 router. For additional router support, you can go to www.portforward.com. Once you've forwarded the port on your router, assign your IP address to your camera in the software, you're just about good to go. Now you can log on via the internet using Internet Explorer. Channel Vision's IP cameras currently only support Windows-based platforms. And you can type in HTTP and then your web address for your camera. You will then be prompted for your password and user login. So if there's any additional questions regarding uh, integration with Control 4, statistics and specifications of the cameras, or uh, the IP setup, you can address them in the question box below. Now if you'll bear with us just a moment, we will do our best to address some of these questions so that we can uh, better assist you. I believe we did address that the presentation will be available online afterwards, as well as um, pricing structure against competitive models. Regarding a feature for feature 2 megapixel, I can assure you that Channel Vision will offer one of the most competitive prices available in the industry with the most features, including the ability to uh, stream directly to Control 4, Crestron, and Savant. This is a unique feature with limited manufacturers offering this. And regarding, <coughs> excuse me, regarding our web servers, both web servers will be available with the same central management software platform and control for drivers that are free from extra vegetables. As of today, Channel Vision's IP cameras are not supported by RTI as of yet. However, we do have our on-wall iPod dock, A0316, which will provide metadata um, and track listings to your RTI device. And check with uh, extra vegetables regarding the dealer login. Uh, they believe they may have recently just updated this.
And there's a question regarding if you're going to use the analog video output of the IP camera, will it still have the high resolution? Uh, the answer to that question is no. Regarding um, analog video, obviously you'll get the best possible uh, video that analog connections are capable of. <coughs> okay. With that being said, we will um, take it a step further just to add uh, one last question regarding the IP cameras. All of our IP cameras, verifocal lenses, are manual, meaning that you can set it and forget it. So this is a uh, manual zoom that you could adjust once you set it, but once you set it, you'll have to manually adjust it from there. However, there are additional things to note regarding the zoom feature, which we will address in the software platform shortly. There will be another section available for questions, so please do keep them coming, and we will um, try our best to address them at the end of the webinar. Any unanswered questions, we will try to contact uh, everybody directly with the answers and the questions that were asked. So when would I use an IP camera? Well, the good news is that with the onset of everything being Wi-Fi and network-enabled devices now, um, the IP cameras offer a great solution for both commercial and residential applications. Whether you're in a commercial environment trying to connect multiple cameras to a network to ensure that you have high resolution recording and the ability to cover a large area with fewer cameras, IP cameras offer a great solution uh, for commercial applications and with low cost channel vision IP cameras offers an even better advantage over the competition. Residential applications will apply the same. Um, IP cameras, generally speaking, are slightly more expensive than typical analog cameras. However, will give you dramatically better image quality and do offer the ability to integrate with automation systems uh, like we discussed earlier, including Control 4, Savant, and Crestron. <coughs> now, some of the particulars. Considerations for your IP-based system. Network bandwidth, uh, we will discuss, as well as the role that megapixel resolution plays, video compression, and some of your recording options, or the common question, how do I record this information? We will begin with network bandwidth. Now, bandwidth is a measure of how fast information is transferred on your network. It's like water flowing through a pipe. The larger the pipe, the more water that can get through. Bandwidth is the measurement of the size of this pipe. In more technical terms, network bandwidth is defined as the total data capacity that can be handled by a data connection. I personally like my analogy better. The amount of bandwidth used by network cameras um, is determined by several factors and I cannot give you a definitive answer regarding your specific network. There are online calculators that you can utilize to give you a guide and they are just that, a guide. Um, however, the several factors that will alter your bandwidth are most notably your image resolution, your frame rate, and your compression ratio. Regarding your resolution, an IP camera's resolution is determined by pixels. The higher the resolution, the higher the pixel count, and the greater amount of detail that you'll be able to capture in your video image. It's important to determine how many or how much detail is enough to meet the requirement for your specific application. Typically, as the image quality goes up, so does the amount of bandwidth required. So it's best to find the level that's going to meet your needs while optimizing your network's bandwidth. Regarding compression, video compression is a very important tool in helping ease the strain on your network as well as offering a unique solution. Uh, compression technologies such as M, uh, Motion JPEG or MJPEG, MPEG-4 and H.264 will allow users to stream and record high quality video without hoarding all of your bandwidth. Now H.264 
and uh, MJPEG are both offered in the Channel Vision IP cameras. And H.264 is the latest compression that will dramatically reduce your file size and overall efficiency when it comes to storage and cost. Regarding your frame rate, this is something that can be adjusted within your IP camera uh, video management software. By controlling the frame rate, you can reduce the bandwidth usage and eliminate unnecessary frames from traveling over the network while still maintaining constant fluid motion. As noted, Motion JPEG is also the format that you will find um, available for using touchscreen companies and automation systems like Control 4 and Crestron. Recording regarding your remote monitoring, central management software, and network video recorder will be addressed as well. When using your remote monitoring, you'll take a look at something like this. This will be your login via the internet so that you can, uh, once you log into that IP address, this will be the view that you have using the IP cameras. Here you will have basic performance functions, including the ability to note what stream you're on, copy the specifics of your IP address and see your resolution and frame rate, see how many people are logged on, as well as um, adjust a snapshot of the photograph that you're viewing and record that as well. Using a network video recorder is one way that you can record your video. Now, as mentioned, Channel Vision does not have its own NVR platform today. However, I would stay tuned because this is a product that will be available um, early 2012. If you are using a network video recorder, you will have a few different options. Typically, your video footage from your IP camera is recorded either to a hard drive, uploaded to an FTP site, or stored on a dedicated NVR. Network video recorders will capture your video stream from remote IP cameras and store them on the hard disk. As mentioned, Channel Vision IP cameras are OnVIF compliant, so they should integrate with any OnVIF compliant NVR. When you're using uh, monitoring using the central management software platform, this is video management software that will give you a great deal of flexibility when it comes to viewing and managing the cameras within the network. Video management solutions will provide tools including multiple recording of cameras, event management, alarm notification, playback, and more. One question that may come up is how much storage do I need? And we'll address that shortly. One option that you can do when using a central management software platform on your computer to use uh, essentially making your computer in NVR is how we're going to address our storage today. If you deem the storage on your computer uh, not enough or you like additional storage, you can add a network attached storage device. So when the amount of data stored exceeds the limitations of your direct storage on your computer or NVR, a network attached storage allows for increased storage space and flexibility. This provides a single storage device that can be connected to the network where multiple devices can access and store files too, offering a low-cost storage solution. Regarding video storage, some of the questions that you may ask are how many surveillance cameras are operating in the system? Will the cameras be recording continuously or just during certain hours of the day? 
Will your IP cameras be set just to record motion? How long will the video be stored on the hard disk? And what is the image quality? These are going to be the questions that you'll have to make note of and that you'll have to ask yourself when designing your system. Because of IP-based surveillance offers several key benefits, including um, greater storage capacity and Hertz enhanced searching capabilities, the video images will be stored directly, offering users the ability to quickly sort through archived data. So these are the questions that you will we'll want to make note of regarding your uh, IP camera system. Addressing the question of how much do I need, this is another variable that I cannot answer for you directly um, because it depends on multiple factors, including your resolution, your frame rate, and your compression, as we spoke about earlier as well as affecting your bandwidth. So just to give you an example of the best setting on the Channel Vision IP cameras of two mega, full 2 megapixel resolution at 15 frames a second for full motion video using the best compression method, you can expect to use about 2 gigs an hour. So if you're recording four cameras for 12 hours a day, that should give you um, about 10 days worth of video for a terabyte of storage. Of course, depending on additional variables as well. With that being said, let's take a look at the central management software itself and how it's going to be able to help us. The first thing we're going to do is log in and load the software that's included with the computer. Once you get to your software loaded on the PC, this will be the interface that initially starts. As you can see, there's no IP camera listed yet because this is what we're going to do next. Add the IP cameras, set up some users, and set up our um, storage capacity. Once you log in, this will be your home screen or system screen. From here, you have a plethora of different features, including um, selection of your 36 cameras right here in the viewable area on your screen. You can select multiple views of your camera if you want quad views or a nine box, for example. Here is your network information on the top left-hand side and we'll offer additional information including your date format um, and some of the essential basic fun functions that we have set up on our screen. Our next setup or task will be to assign how much disk space we want to use. By first um, to record video on your PC using your PC as your NVR it's best done to establish the hard drive space before uh, we begin recording. Otherwise, the recorder will default to what space is available. And if we're using this computer for other functions, we may not want it to take all of the space necessary. So to begin and to get to the screen, we select our disk icon on the top, which will take us here. Now, we can uh, define a new recording path by clicking the plus button or removing an existing one by clicking the subtract button. Once we've added a new recording, we simply select the approximate total recording time desired, or we could arrange it by available space. Here we can see we have 124,247 megabytes available in this example. So we can select specifically how much we want to record. After we've established a new recording path, we can use the up and down arrow keys and select the variation between and select the sequence recording. While the disk space of the priority path is full, it will overflow to the second option. 
this would be our NAS storage device if we have it set up as a second option. Then we can select the available space that we want it to record up to. In this case, 500 gigabytes. And then click the Save icon. And after you've done that, you've already established the recording capacity for your computer. The next thing we'll need to do is set up our cameras individually. So to view our cameras and begin our setup process, first we're going to select the channel button at the top of the screen. This channel setup will then take us to this screen, which is where we'll be able to begin assigning information to each of the individual cameras. Here on the left-hand side, you can see that you'll have a choice of 18 different cameras. Um, or you can click here to ad add the additional 19 through 36. And each camera can be configured during this setup page. Simply click the Enable Channel feature. Under your channel tag, you can name the specific camera and input the IP address that we assigned to it earlier, as well as the port that we arranged it for, and our password, ID, and login. From here, we'll be able to adjust our resolution. You can see that we'll have a variety of different choices from resolution, including full HD 2 megapixels, all the way down to a low resolution SIF format. Quality implies uh, some of your, your, obviously the quality of the resolution that's being recorded, rating from low to best of your full HD 2 megapixels and selecting your video compression format of motion JPEG if utilizing a smaller stream or H.264 for best compression for full video. Frame rate will be able to be adjusted from 3 all the way up to 15 uh, frames per second indicating that you'll have fluent motion and full functioning video. Now, as we discussed earlier regarding storage and bandwidth, these will be the, the, the three main areas that you'll want to adjust that will affect both storage and um, bandwidth capacity. Obviously, the higher the storage and the resolution, the higher the storage and the more bandwidth that it will use. Once completed, we can select apply to all of our channels and keep that resolution moving forward. Now, if you're question, you'll note here that we have multiple tabs within the channel setup, including schedule, motion, pan, tilt, zoom, and alarm triggers, which we'll take a look at next. By selecting the motion tab, we'll be able to select up the motion tag for this specific area. Now, in our example, we may not want the street view that you see here to have motion because otherwise it may trigger motion to occur for every event or every time a car drives by and begin recording, which may not be necessary. Since we are concerned about our storage, we can simply take our mouse and drag it across the screen on the area that we do not want covered for motion area 3. Then we can designate the sensitivity on that specific area that we have covered, as well as adjust two additional areas within the screen. Once your motion detection is set up, you might want to set up an alarm trigger. This is a popular feature that we utilize with many customers using automation systems where once an alarm is triggered or motion is triggered, for example, this can trigger an alarm which when then can communicate with another device to pop up automatically on your customer's television or touch screen or trigger an alarm um, sound even. By selecting the I.O. tab, you'll have two different types 
of alarms, which you can adjust your interval delay from 1 to 60 seconds. You can even arrange right here on the motion message section the ability to have an email sent when an event occurs, or you could even have it play a sound such as a dog barking and load a file sound in there specifically. If uh, that's not your fancy, you can arrange a pop-up for the camera to pop up on your central management software once an alarm is triggered. Now that we've established our camera resolution, quality, our motion area, and set up our alarms, as well as defined our hard drive storage area, we're going to need to set up our schedule for what we're going to want to record. Simply select the Schedule tab. We'll yield you a screen like such. The IP camera software um, does enable five recording modes, which includes red for motion, yellow for an alarm, or blue, including a motion with alarm, or um, green just as an alarm, or white indicating that no recording has taken place. Simply use the mouse, fill the squares in that you desire to have, and select the color. It's that simple. After you've done your time, you can arrange the specific dates, start and stop recording time, which should then look like this. In this example, you'll see that I've arranged um, for specific recording of motion during after hours, during normal business hours. I in, would like it to do constant recording and um, after 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. just have a event scheduled such as an alarm trigger. Now, in addition to setting up your schedule, you may want to grant users individual access to certain features. To do this, you can click on the User tab on the top of your uh, home screen platform toolbar, which will take you here. Here, you'll have the ability to adjust features of your administrator and features of your guest by selecting specific features such as access to the maps, the settings, and the search features, you can give specific uh, features to your guest. Here on the right hand side, add your user's name, password, and confirm their password and define if they're going to be listed as an administrator or guest. Then simply click add for a result here. Now you can see here that we have uh, Billy listed as an administrator with full functionality and Charlie as a login guest who can only um, or who will not be allowed to access the map of where the cameras are located, the search functions, or be able to shut down the system. Now that we've established our user, we're going to want to locate some of the cameras on here um, in our mapping platform. And we can also organize these users into groups. For example, we can name a group, um, for example, Shift 1 or First Shift and grant that group guest access or administrator access to certain features as defined. I will have to double check on the official amount of groups that you can create, um, but it should be enough to get through a couple different applications. So adding a map, and, and what is this going to do for me? Well, once you add a map, it provides a centralized location for a snapshot, if you will, on what your um, cameras are going to look like and where they're going to be located. Simply select the map icon on your toolbar, <coughs> which will take you to this home screen. Then in the area here on the right, you can select uh, by right-clicking 
and select a map. This will prompt you to be able to load any map that you want. Um, it could be a map of the United States, a map of California, a map of your house, and this can be loaded here. Once you load the map onto your system, your next task will be to add your cameras. Now this may seem like it could be a little more complicated than it is, but it's really not. Simply click on the icon below, either a camera, an alarm, or um, a new map within a certain area, and drag it to your location. So once you've drag, uh, drug your icon to your location, you will be able to log into your map from your map screen once it's been saved. And now to access the camera located in that specific region, you can just simply, simply click on the icon and it will yield your camera in that area. It's a great way to organize all your um, all your cameras and see where your platform uh, can take you by organizing your cameras in whatever manner you deem fit and grouping them accordingly by loading docks, east coast, west coast, and because they're IP based and on the network you can be accessed from anywhere in the world. Now one of the most important features of a DVR or NVR is the playback feature. Making sure that this is an easy task uh, for your customer because typically your customer will be the one using these, not necessarily you. Uh, of course you may get your hands in there as well and may be asked to or called upon by your customer to find information that has been recorded. So to do so, first we're going to go to our home screen. Remember this is the initial screen when we first log into our uh, central management software. And here you'll be able to either log in to the camera settings like we were earlier or we can select the playback feature which looks like a little strip of film. Once we've done that, it will take us to uh, the recorded images. Here, uh, we'll be able to choose the date and the video of the specific channel, and sh it will show the recording status like such. So just as a reminder, again, we discussed no color means no video. If it's red, we had it scheduled for normal or constant recording, and yellow was motion recording. Now you can simply use the features on the side for um, your, well, to, to pull up a specific time, simply click on that area. Now that you have your monitor view, you'll be able to utilize this just like your TiVo, for example. Select your specific time, spe select your specific channel, play, skip, pause, and fast forward. Now, as we mentioned earlier, one of the main benefits of using IP cameras is having a high resolution uh, 2 megapixel camera. This also will enable you to have more recording in a specific area. What I mean by that is that because of megapixel cameras are going to take surveillance to the next level, with providing higher resolution, the improved resolution not only results in clearer images, but also increases the camera's field of view without any loss of image detail. For example, a single IP camera can monitor an area that would normally require multiple cameras. Consider, for example, how many cameras it takes to monitor a location such as a parking lot or a retail store. In a parking lot, for instance, we can have one single camera, as you see here, to cover the entire area. And because of its high resolution and greater image detail, we can zoom in on a specific area. By using the screen, the preview screen down here in the corner, we can adjust our slide zoom bar right here on the left hand side and zoom in on a specific area. 
to get a high quality image of a car's license plate. To be able to take our IP cameras from this to this offers the ability to have a great feature um, and is one of the primary benefits of utilizing an IP system. Now that I have the um, recording that I want to capture, in this case a license plate for example, I want to be able to save this video or save just a snapshot of this. So that will first look like this. Um, on the same screen that we're looking at here, which is this screen here, um, you simply select the AVI button where my mouse is located or the JPEG button just above it for a snapshot. An AVI file will be created which will be enabled to be played on any media player. To back up, simply um, select your AVI file button which will look at something just like this. Now I want to get a little bit larger view so you can see it, so take a look here. Now that we be able to select a specific start time uh, for the year, date, and recording session desired, the specific channel that we want exported, name our file, include our sound, click Save. And congratulations, you have just saved the recording exported it that file that you can now save to a flash drive and hand to the proper authorities. If you just wanted to take a snapshot of a uh, perhaps of an image of somebody so that you can post that in the break room so that everybody knows um, who not to allow in the parking lot for example, simply select the JPEG feature and save as to the my picture portion of your computer and name the file. From the playback screen here as well, we can view our SD card where we can store up to a 32 gig SD card and record MJPEG files directly to the SD card. To access the SD card, simply access the SD card icon in the playback menu, select your channel and be able to see your view. Just as a reminder, you can log in from the internet and receive this view. And uh, just by typing in your IP address. And we also mentioned that because of the IP camera's analog capabilities, you can also record to a DVR. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of the DVR um, or detailed specifications. I'm just going to outline them here for you, including uh, the 3G series offering USB ports, dual streaming capabilities, dual video outputs, VGA main and spot monitoring as well as an audio input and output including sensors and will be available to you in 4, 8 and 16 channels. Um, the software that comes with the DVR will enable you to connect multiple DVRs together and do still image snapshot. However, those two software platforms are different and are not compatible. The um, DVRs are a low-cost alternative to IP and to make it even more efficient we offer three kits available for you um, including outdoor cameras, indoor cameras, or mount inside of a structured wiring cabinet. Uh, great value, for example, a full kit with four cameras, a DVR, and a hard drive, whether indoor or outdoor, will cost suggested dealer price of under $500. Now we'll uh, see if we can address any additional questions that we may have had and see if we can uh, make sure everybody gets recording. Uh, yes, the question here is if a motion, can you paint out or block a specific area? which I do believe we addressed with our drag and drop and we can set up three different areas. The recommended cabling uh, these cameras take and some of the advantages of that, well, depends on how you're going to network it. If you're using an IP based platform, um, CAT5 or CAT6, the standard uh, today is CAT5. 
CAT 5e offers all of the capabilities and features that we discussed. Question of how many groups can you create? This is a question I will have to uh, double check and confirm. I believe it's 10 groups, but I will have to confirm and get back to you guys. The question are the choices for access only administrator or guest. Uh, the answer to that is yes. You can log in and assign groups individual authority to define to better define your guest. But yes, those are the only two choices. You may be able to grant one group of guests more access than the other. I do believe we may have addressed most of the questions. I do apologize if we did not get to all of your questions. Uh, you can feel free to type them in if I have missed any, and we will address them in the um, latter part of the training, or follow-up for that matter. Just a few additional things. If you want to take a look for yourself, you can log into Channel Vision's IP cameras for the live stream and see what's going on at Channel Vision by using the following IP address. This information is also available on our website by searching the specific product 6521 or 6522. Below that you will find the demo feature. If you desire to view it on your smartphone, you would want to download uh, the iPro Secure app from the Android or uh, App Store and type in these specific IP address and port and be sure to add your username and password. Just as a reminder, we do offer 24-7 tech support as well as uh, one year warranty on all of our powered products and 10 year on all of our passive products. We do offer free trainings and I do recommend that anybody that was charged to attend today to ask for a refund. We do offer free system design, um, whether that be an IP based system structured wiring panel or an audio system, we can help in any, uh, any of those areas. Whether you need just a part list or a full system design, feel free to give us a call. Uh, no need to memorize everything that we went over today. Under the instruction manual tabs on both your IP cameras and your DVRs are a shortcut list uh, to some of the steps that we discussed today. Just as a reminder, Channel Vision does manufacture over 600 products broken down into eight categories as one of the largest structured wire manufacturers in the country. We also offer a true plasma proof IR control systems, high performance audio and speakers, as well as a bus for audio and power over CAT5, whole house intercom and telephone entry, um, surveillance solutions like we discussed today, and Channel Vision exclusive technology like how to modulate on digital cable. To complete your design, just click on channelvision.com and log in uh, to the free custom panel design and fill out the attached form and we will uh, send you a complete drawing or part list depending on your needs. Be sure to download Channel Vision's latest application guide on the home page as well on the right hand side which offers 26 pages of Channel Vision knowledge updates and applications. Because you spent some time with us and attended today's training, we'd like to extend a special accommodation available to you where you can purchase one time directly for, from Channel Vision um, at a discount so that you can get your hands on the product so you too can become a believer. As mentioned at the end of the presentation, please conclude uh, by completing a brief survey. We love and welcome your feedback. It's the only way we can improve and based on our dealer's feedback is the foundation from which Channel Vision was built. If you have any additional questions, feel free to contact us uh, at the number below. Again, my name is Troy Barron from Channel Vision Technology, and we will be glad to assist in any way we can. Thank you for spending your time today with us. We recapped a few different things, including 
uh, some of the specifications of the cameras, how to integrate them with automation systems, uh, as well as some of the considerations for you to consider when doing an IP system, including bandwidth, megapixel resolution, and compression, as well as discuss the platform itself when utilizing your computer as your NVR and utilizing the included central management software. Uh, hopefully you will have just seen how easy it is to set up an NVR and record your IP cameras at home using your existing computer or a dedicated computer for that matter and offer your customers a high quality solution that is incredibly versatile and will take your customers installs to the next level and make you some more money. Again this concludes our webinar. Again recorded sessions will be available and you can feel free to contact us if you have any additional questions. Thank you and have a great day.